my beautiful people. Come on in. Let's get some music playing so we can uh, get excited about everything. Let's see. Let's do one more day of hope because that's right now. That's pretty much all we got. It's hope for the future. And prayer, pray, 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 pray. I got my sparkles on today. I can hear the sun. Good morning. Where are you from, everybody? And the rain Monica and Sandy are here fall. fast. Cindy, Lou, Tamara, Laura. I Esther. can feel my courage tremble. Just a question. My heart is sinking. Yeah, I was right on time. And my world is caving. Give in. us a thumbs up, share our videos, and subscribe to your YouTube channel. There's light on the horizon, and the darkness will give in. One more day of hope, one more day of faith, tomorrow will be brighter, if I get through today, better days are coming, further down the road, so for now I'll just keep clinging. One more day of hope. One more day. One more day. And I know that I am this. My dreams are in my grasp When I find the power within me I know this storm will pass It will only make me stronger I can last a little longer If I keep holding on To one more day of hope One more day of faith Tomorrow will be brighter if I get through today, better days are coming, further down the road. So for now, I'll just keep clinging to one more day of hope. One more day. One more day, one more day. Okay, folks, we are officially two weeks away from Thanksgiving here in the United States. Two weeks. I'm so excited. So Robert ran to the grocery store yesterday afternoon and got the rest of the things on my grocery list, except for some fresh broccoli. We didn't get any fresh broccoli yet. 
but that I'll make that the week of Thanksgiving. And, you know, we are good to go. I have got everything I need in the house to start cooking. Hold on, everybody. There we go. It's back again. Um, sometimes that happens, and I don't know why. We've got uh, electrical people working on power lines just across the way, and they've been, power's been um, doing some weird stuff this morning. Oh, my neck, my bracelet just broke. Oh, well, I'll have to take it off. I can't put it on while I'm talking. I don't think I can do two things at one time. Because mainly I can't see it. But it's magnetic, which helps. There we go. I got it. Anyway, so it's we're in zone two this week. Zone two is our kitchen. And I've been getting my kitchen all spruced up. I have an one oven that I need to clean. And it's it's going to... I always think it's going to be worse than it is, but... It won't be. We have um, get get your calendars ordered. Yes, get them ordered now. Now's the time because we only got um, another two weeks of holiday missions. And today's holiday mission is where are the missions? Have I put them away again somewhere? Yeah, I put them behind me. Couldn't find them. Isn't that the way it goes? Today we are on. Um, Aaron's day. Today is the day to get all your non-perishables for the holidays. I did that yesterday. I'm a day ahead. Look over your meal plans and menus and to form a grocery list. Break that grocery list, list down into perishable and non-perishable items. And this means canned goods, box goods, paper goods, Get all these items taken care of and out of the way. You will feel so good knowing you've done these things ahead of time. I made sure we had plenty of Ziploc bags, gallon size, excuse me, and quart size. And I'm ready to pack up leftovers. I have some aluminum pans. I can put some things in with lids on them that I absolutely love that are disposable, that I can send people home with stuff, or I can make rolls in them. And we are good. To, we are, we're on sure footing right now. And I've got the list of things to do, list of things to do. I, I, I've been corresponding with my beautiful, uh, She's sending me a hazmat suit, reminding me that um, one day I came to her, her shop with a hazmat suit on. Just uh, anyway, she had had a little God thing happen to her, and she wanted me to be the first to know this morning, and she sent me a message. She lives about five hours from me, and maybe one day she'll move back up, or I might get my hair cut then. Unless I drive down to her house. Anyway, let's let's get started with our question and answers. We've got a great sale going on. We're cleaning out our warehouse, y'all. Just get everything, get everything uh, cleaned up so so that we can work efficiently. That's what we're doing at the office. That's what I'm doing at home. And it's all good. So Let's get started with our questions. Somebody asked a question in here earlier and I missed it. I saw it, but then I, I totally forgot it. So if you've asked a question in here, something, oh, digital clutter. It was about digital clutter. Set up a folder for, it was for projects, research projects they were working on. Set up a folder and put them in it. 
put all that stuff in one folder. You can put it on your desktop. <coughs> and then that way, if you ever need it, you can get back to it. But let me tell you what happens. I have an archive of my old computer, which is in a bag behind my chair. It's, it's so old, I probably couldn't even get it going, but it's archived on, I don't know what it's called, but it, it's a thing that every night at midnight, my computer gets backed up to. And, you know, I've only one time looked at that archive of that old, the whole computer's on there. The whole computer's on there. I, only one time I've looked at that. Yeah, one time, one time. So usually digital digital projects, you never look at them again. Once you turn them in and turn them in for your job or whatever, you never really look at them again. But you might. So hold on to it. When I was a county commissioner, I had to hold on to all my files. Uh, there wasn't even a time limit on it. I had to hold on to all my email and be able to archive it. And I did that. I did that. But I was a county commissioner 20 years ago. <clears throat> Could you tell me what the zones are and how they fall in the month of November? Well, let me say first, if you get our emails, it's in our flight plan our sneak peek that comes out on Saturday or Sunday. I don't have a set time, but I want to teach you how, and I might use this little calendar to do it with because it's kind of easy to see. So here we are in November, the start in October. October had two days, 29, 30, 31, three days for that last week in October. And November kicked off on a Wednesday. So these three days here, right, were zone five. It was the end of October, zone five right here. Zone one started on Wednesday and went through the end of the week. Now, this week, we are in zone two, and here it is, the ninth day of October, we are in, we are in zone two to the end of the week. <coughs> zone three is next week. It starts on the 12th and goes to the end of the week. That's zone three. That's our main bathroom and another room we pick in the house. I don't know what it'd be. Rebecca hasn't sent me those things yet. She picks them out and I just run with them. Zone four is Thanksgiving week. Now, we don't do a lot in zone four on Thanksgiving week. We're getting ready for Thanksgiving on the 23rd, but we are going to get some things we're, we're going to get stuff done and our bedroom is going to stay clean. We're going to change our sheets on Monday and get things looking good. And then the rest of the week, we're going to focus on Thanksgiving. Now, zone five right here is the last week in November. Robert has a birthday this Sunday right here. And our anniversary is right here. So, and <clears throat> December 1st is going to start on a Friday. Which is, which is strange. So we're only going to have one day in zone one. And that's pretty much cleaning up from Thanksgiving. And then we start again. This is zone two. Zone two is usually the first full week of the month. But sometimes the first happens on a Sunday and we get a whole week in zone one. But if the first falls on a Saturday, it sort of messes things up and we kind of have to um, fly by the seat of our pants and run a few missions on for, the, for zone one during this first week. Anyway, that's how it, how it goes. 
I started Fly Lady and I've shined my sink. Now what do I do? Pick out your clothes for tomorrow. Stay focused on shining your sink. What happened to me was I shined my sink and then I said, I can't put a dirty dish in that in that sink. So what I did was I emptied my dishwasher because I needed a dirty dish disposal unit. Then I cleaned off the countertops because with a sink that shiny, you can't have stuff sitting on your countertops. The stove said, clean me too. And before I knew it, the floor was clean. Everything was clean. And I had copper tone appliances, green countertops. Um, it was just amazing how beautiful my little one butt kitchen was. And I had yellow linoleum, I can't even say it, yellow linoleum on the floor with grooves in it. And I got down on my butt and screamed, scrub, scrubbed those to get them all clean. And you know, my kitchen was beautiful and I was happy for it. And I was happy for me to have a clean kitchen because when your kitchen is clean, you don't mind getting in there and cooking. You got it? So what do you do next? Stay focused on that sink. Wipe it out every time so it doesn't get water spots in it. If you need to get a little car wax and wax it so water spots don't spit, slip, water spots don't stick to it, do that. My, my mind is running 90 miles an hour. And it's, it's going to be fun. Stay focused. We practice one habit a month. When you first join, you go shine your sink. Now, you got to do other things like get dressed to lace up shoes every morning. Uh, fix your hair and face so you don't scare yourself when you walk in your bathroom because you look like your mama. Just somebody used to say she hated when I said that. But, you know, it's according to how your mama was. It really is. So stay focused on getting up and getting dressed to lace up shoes. Do your before bed routine, a really abbreviated one. Pick out your clothes for tomorrow. Uh, take, get up and get dressed to lace up shoes. Put a load of, load of laundry in the washing machine. God rest my mama's soul. So it's about six things you can do every day. Pick out your clothes so you're ready for tomorrow. Brush your teeth. So I saw something cute yesterday. And I thought, I think I'm going to tell you about it. It said, instead of brushing your teeth with your dominant hand, brush your teeth with your opposite hand. Two minutes brushing your teeth with your opposite hand. It would be awkward to brush my teeth with my left hand. But I'm going to start doing it. And then three times a day, well, first, 10 times a day, when you're brushing your teeth, look in the mirror and say, I love myself. Isn't that what we teach? Finally loving yourself? 10 times, right in front of the mirror, I love you. God made you. And I inhabit this body. I love me because God loves me. Just Preach to yourself and then take, take 10, it might have been 15, I don't remember, I'd have to look it up, deep breaths, <gasps> just to oxygenate your system. And he said, you'll thank me later. He said, if it doesn't work for you. Uh, I'll send you $100. <laughs> he says he's never had to send $100 to anybody. I don't remember where I saw it. It was on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. But <clears throat> it's oxygenating your body. He said do it three times a day, morning, noon, and night. How cool is that? When do I do the daily missions? Where do I find them? In your flight plan. That's the only place they, they go out in the flight plan. If you're not getting our emails, you're missing out. So sign up to get our emails. They come in your inbox. The flight plan goes out every day at 530 Eastern time. 
Five thirty Eastern time. Y'all, this is um my homemade remedy for <clears throat> a tickle in your throat. I have a little pack of salt. I lick my finger just like that. Get a few grains of salt on my finger. This is um French gray coarse grain salt that I got as a free sample. And it will cut the crud, the, <clears throat> the phlegm that is trying to choke you. It'll stop a cough too. So when do I do the daily missions? I do a daily mission while I'm doing my morning routine. It just falls right into place. And I get it done, out of the way. And where do you find them? In the flight plan. And the flight plan goes out on Facebook and Instagram twice. It goes out at 10 o'clock in the morning today and at 5.35 yesterday. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. How did you come up with the idea of naming your book Sync Reflections? I love the name. I didn't come up with it. My husband did. He's a good namer. He's named, he named the multi wand. He's named several of our products. The multi wand is the one I remember. Uh, but the main thing is we wanted a picture of a shiny sink on the front of the book. And the first one had it. And I don't have one right here. First one had a shiny sink on the front. <clears throat> and we had been looking at pictures. And we had to name the book in January before the book ever came out. And I don't know when it came out, like July or something. I don't remember. October, I think. I, I don't, it, you know, I've slept a lot of days since then. But we had to have it named because in May there was going to be an article in in Woman's, uh, no, in Better Homes and Gardens, I think it was. And it was going to be about our system, the book. <clears throat> and she had, Melanie had to have the name of the book. And that article is up on our website. We've got a uh, a media page that has all those articles on there saved for posterity. And she had to have the name of the book to be able to, to write about it. And she couldn't say no name book. And so I said, honey, I need a name for my book. And since it all started with a shiny sink, that's how it came up with sink reflections. And he is an avid reader. But that's how it got named. And, you know, we got, we got royalties this past week on that book. It took a lot of years to get the royalties on that book. I mean, we sold a lot of them, but they had given us a nice advance on royalties. And we finally started getting royalties a couple of years ago. And it's just, that book has legs like crazy. Y'all love that book. So check out my book, Sync Reflections. It's in our fly shop. We get to buy them. Part of our discussion with the, the publisher was that we would get to buy them at a discount so that we could sell them on our website. Dear, dear fly lady, my house is a huge mess. Will you teach me how to declutter my house? That's what we do every day. Every day we teach you. We teach you how to do a 27 fleeing boogie, how to do a five-minute room rescue, how to run around the house and just grab five things, how to dip into your closet and get five pieces of clothing that you can't wear anymore, how to uh, grab three, three pairs of shoes that don't fit you, how to get rid of things. We, this is what we teach because you can't organize clutter. 
You have to get rid of it. Do you hear me? Organizing it doesn't get it out of the house. Finding a place for it just, just constipates your storage. Yeah, I said it. You put so much stuff in there, you can't get another thing in there. And then start things just start laying out on, on the countertops. Okay. We have a whole section on how to declutter on our website in the getting started section. But you got to start slowly. If somebody came into your house and totally decluttered your house because they were good at this stuff, you would feel violated. I don't want you to feel violated. I want you to do it yourself so that you can get rid of these things and not feel like you've been attacked. Doing it yourself will help it stay away. <clears throat> November is menu planning month, but I'm terrible at it. There is just me and my husband so I need to learn how to cook for two. Not necessarily. Let's say you cook for four and you have leftovers for lunch. Or you put together a little bento box for meals when you don't want to cook. You don't have to cook for two. You can cook for four or six and have leftovers. I made a big pot of chili on Sunday. I got leftovers for two meals. So we could each have another bowl of chili. Good morning, TG. Okay. Numbers. Plan for leftovers. Plan to make soup. Plan to do this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, I'm trying to cut back with what I'm cooking for Thanksgiving. I, I'm really trying to use smaller casserole dishes and different things so that I don't, so, so that I don't have as many leftovers. That's what I'm trying to do for Thanksgiving. And so I've cut down the size of my dishes. Number seven, will you walk us through the kitchen detail cleaning list? Empty the refrigerator and clean thoroughly. We do that every Wednesday. Clean the microwave. You know how easy it is to clean the microwave? You put a cup of water in there and run it for two minutes and just let it sit there. Just let it sit there. Don't open it back up and then take our kitchen scrubber, our sponge, and carefully with gloves on, because that cup's going to be hot. Wipe down the sides. Now, mine has a glass turntable in it, and I can run that through the dishwasher, but it's never that dirty, because I've always got a sink full of hot soapy water going. Clean the stove. I try to clean the stove every time I wipe, wipe up from dinner. And... I have a secret weapon for my glass top stove. I have single edge razor blades, which I need to buy more. Single edge razor blade, so I don't cut myself. And I just, when I'm in this zone, zone two, is when I get the worst part off my stove. It looks like, it looks brand new. Wash canisters. And knickknacks, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's twelve things. So there's seven days in the week. Let's just say you only do two of them a day. You're going to get most of them done. If you don't get them all done, you know, it rolls around next month. <clears throat> Wash. Canisters and knickknacks. I've done that this week. I had some extra room in my dishwasher, so I emptied out what little bit was in the canisters into a paper plate or a Ziploc bag. I used Ziploc bag and paper plates and then uh, put the canisters in the dishwasher. Wash the inside windows. It's easy to do. I use my purple rag and just reach and do it with plain water. 
uh, straighten drawers, drawers and cupboards. I've been straightening my silverware drawer this week, just going in and plucking some things out I don't want to use anymore or haven't used in a long time. Scrub down the cabinet fronts only a few at a time. I noticed yesterday I needed to do that where uh, over my silverware drawer. It's the cabinet has, we only have one upper cabinet, y'all. The rest are a china closet and a pantry. And, you know, it would take, with a little Dawn dishwashing liquid or some power scrub, I could have it done in no time. I do not use Murphy's oil soap. It makes me sneeze like a crazy person. Venta hood. I don't have a Venta hood. I have a down draft vent and I put that vent, I put that filter in my dishwasher and run it. It takes up this much room. It's just little. Scrub down the cabinet fronts, just a few at a time. Clean light diffusing bowls. I don't have any of those. I have canned lights, and Robert changed all those out to LED lights a few years ago, and <clears throat> they are so beautiful. Clean under the sink and throw away old rags. I've done that this week. So I've done several of these things on the detailed cleaning list. Clean pet dishes. I just stick them in the dishwasher. That's all I do. So the machines do most of it. But you can pick and do two a day and work down your list. And we love having, having that detailed cleaning list and the sheet protector in your control journal. Then if you need to add to that, that list different things, then do it. Maybe you want to wipe down your, your mixer. Every time I clean, use my mixer, I wipe it down like it's brand new. Okay, number eight. Here we go. My family is so big, and that means a lot of Christmas presents for me to buy. What are some good ways to save money and still give nice presents to the adults? I, ha I have the kids done already. Well, first off, if you all get together for Christmas, then why aren't you exchanging names? That means you buy one gift, not 15. But if you're going to buy gifts for everybody, buy gifts that they can use. And the best gift we have, and, and they're 45% off right now, is our Fly Lady calendar. Fly Lady calendar. So for a budget of $100, you could probably get several Fly Lady calendars because they use coupon code READY45. You can get a calendar. People love these calendars. They put them up. They use them. They can see them from their chair. They can see them sitting at the breakfast breakfast um, bar in the morning. They they can see the calendar because you put it in a place. And we got our little calendar that is great for purses and different things. But right now we have um, this is not a gift. This is for your control journal to help you plan a digital calendar, a digital calendar. So get that. <clears throat> but you could also buy bags of pecans. Those are great gifts. I, I've given those many times for Christmas. Bags of pecans. People who like to bake with pecans, won't buy them for themselves, especially if they're older people. My home is such a huge mess. How can I get past the feeling of hopelessness? Put on blinders. Put on blinders. Go shine your sink. Get dressed to lace up shoes. And... Just get started. That's all you can do. Sometimes all you need to do is put a basket in the middle of your floor and start putting things in it that are on the floor. Once you get the floor cleaned off, you can start cleaning off 
flat surfaces in that living room. If you get one room clean, I would start in the kitchen. You don't have a lot of toys in the kitchen, but sometimes you do. And just start playing a game that I like to call a reverse scavenger hunt. So if you're in the kitchen and you see something that doesn't belong in the kitchen, take it to where it belongs. And when you're in that room, do you see something that doesn't belong there? Take that back to where it belongs and do it for five times. You'll be getting some things where they belong and you'll be playing a game. But put on blinders, stay focused on one flat surface at a time, whether it's your floor, a coffee table, and things are going to start to look better. But rebuke that feeling of hopelessness because the devil wants you to feel hopeless. He wants you stuck in chaos. And rebuke it in the name of God's son, Jesus. Okay. Hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See your house clean. See it pretty. See your coffee table cleared off and beautiful. You can do this. You really can. But when you start looking at the whole house, you're just going to curl up on the couch and go to sleep. Don't do it. Rebuke that devil right now. I love the beginner baby steps. Is it okay that I'm going through them for a second time to make sure I've got them down pat? Or am I being a perfectionist again? I'm just afraid of messing up. You can't mess up fly lady except by not doing anything. If you're doing the baby steps, you're doing something. I really want to be successful this time. Thank you so much for helping me. Re get my emails. Read my messages. They're hard. They're written from my heart. We got a, oh, let's see if I can find it. We got a great testimonial yesterday. Oh, I mean, it was just beautiful. She was a little, she was a little girl when her mama became a fly baby. Where did that go? I know it's here somewhere. I know it's here. There. Let's see if it's here. I read it just before I went to bed last night. This testimony began as my mother's and soon became mine. My mother found you around five years ago. She was instantly hooked. Since I was rather young, I grew up with Fly Lady, but I am ashamed to say I was not a it it was not a name I liked. I understand that because new new people cram Fly Lady down their kids' throats, our husbands' throats. So don't do that, y'all. I've had to apologize for you. It was not the name I liked. Fly Lady to me meant chores. A few years later, my mother signed me up for the Fly Lady emails. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but the emails showed a different fly lady than the one I had grown accustomed to. This fly lady was not bossing you to be bossing you, but out of love. I enjoyed reading the emails, but for some reason, I still was not doing the routines. I made many excuses. The worst one being that I could deal with that when I was older which I despise myself for thinking. Don't beat yourself up. Don't do that. Don't do that. It was like I was fighting a losing argument. You know you are wrong, but it's not half as bad as knowing the other person is right. And still, you don't want to admit because that would take humility, something we don't like, 
but we have to accept for things to get better. That's so true. Then I realized my problem. That's half the battle, y'all, is realizing the problem. I did not like being told what to do over and over again because I already knew what I should do. But it, but, but had been procrastinating, which made me feel bad about myself. So now I'm, I completely refuse to let myself know they are right. I realize that she does not stand for sidetracked home executive, but stubborn home executive. The swish and swipe had been something I hated and had been avoiding. But after reading so many testimonials, I finally broke down and said to myself, why don't I just do it? So I did. And I tried swish and swap and was shocked by how proud I felt. The best part, though, was the fact that I allowed myself to be proud, not because someone else praised me for it, because I enjoyed having a clean bathroom. When I first started reading, when I first started reading your emails, I was marveled at how much was left to chance. Chance someone would read them. Chance they, I keep moving the page. Chance they would be converted to fly babies. But now I know that it was not left up to chance. It was left up to God. Thank you. You have truly blessed us from a not so stubborn anymore fly baby. Praise God. You know, I'm bossy. God made me direct. But I want you to do it for you, not for me, not for husband, not for. I want you to do it for you. And you're, if you don't like swishing and swiping in the morning, swish and swipe before you go to bed. I had somebody tell me that the other day. She started swishing and swiping it in the evening and it's made all the difference. Wow, how beautiful. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. It's okay to jump into the beginner's baby steps, but sometimes you have to, as the Bible teaches, you have to go from milk to meat. You can't be eat, drinking milk all the time. You got you to gotta get some other things in your body. You need to stretch your wings and do a little bit more. So it's all about establishing your simple routines. Put it on a note card. Put it in, in a, a little four by six photo album, a morning routine, a before bed routine, maybe even a come home from work routine. I'm, Sage, she comes home from work at 10 o'clock in the morning or 11. She works these weird shifts and she comes home. She has to eat breakfast then she's going to take a nap. And then she's going to get up in the late afternoon. So, and she's made biscuits and gravy this morning. So good job, Sage. But you got to get your rest. So sometimes it's a get up routine and a go to bed routine. Not morning and evening. So don't beat yourself up because you, you're not doing it exactly the way I tell you. Get a morning routine. Do your baby steps, but every we do them like we do the 31 baby steps three times a year pretty much. On the months that have 31 days, December has 31 days. And January does too. My calendar just arrived. I love the huge spaces. What is next month's focus? I want to put it on the calendar. Well, November is menu planning. December is a gift to you. December is a gift to you. And that gift is pampering, pampering yourself every day. So on our sneak peek, on Saturday or Sunday, I send out this sneak peek that has the missions for next week. 
It also has the holiday missions. I put them in there this time. It has the zones and it has a, excuse me, a pamper mission. And that pamper mission has some pages down below it. Five pages of pamper missions y'all have, have told us about that we put on our website. And I've linked to them in the sneak peek. And those are so fun. You can print them out. You'd have to, you know, put them in into a document and print them out and, and copy and paste and then cut them up and put them in a peanut butter jar or a crock of some kind with a lid on it that you can shake and, you know, have some fun and make a great gift too. It wouldn't cost anything. You just reach in and grab one. And it's everything from doing your toes, doing your nails, conditioning your hair, putting a facial scrub on your, uh, uh, you know, on your complexion. It's fun stuff. What is around this month's focus? Yeah, It's pampering yourself, doing something to take care of you because, you know, your fingernails get long. Ours do. Mine and Patty's nails just grow like little weeds. And it just comes a point when it's snagging your hair and doing everything, you just have to trim them back. So next month's pampering missions is what our focus is. And January is going back to the basics. Shining your sink. February is decluttering 15 minutes a day. March is getting dressed to lace up shoes. April is making your bed. May is moving, getting up and moving. June is drinking your water. July is swish and swipe. August is doing a load of laundry each day. September is your before bed routine, practicing that every single day. You've already been doing it, but we're putting an emphasis on it for the new people. October is getting rid of paper clutter. Some of y'all are still getting rid of paper clutter. Uh, November is menu planning and December is, you know, I could spill that off just like that. Pampering yourself. What is a round robin and what does it have to do with cleaning or organizing? Well, sometimes Rebecca likes to do a round robin with our missions. So we clean off a hot spot in our kitchen. We clean off a hot spot in our living room. We clean off a hot spot in our entrance. We clean off a hot spot. We just go to kind of every room and round robin. It's just going to every room in your house and doing something. Every room in my house needs something done. And I didn't take a shower yet. And I don't know where to start. What do I do? Go, go take a shower. Nobody wants to smell your pits. Wash your hair. Fix your face. Put on some clean clothes. And then go to your kitchen and shine your sink. That's where you start. What do I do? And, and you know, sometimes when you don't want to take a shower and you don't want to have good hygiene, that's a demon. And you got to rebuke it. I, one time I had a lady who contacted me and she hadn't had a shower in a week. And she'd been in her nasty pajamas all week. And, and she had little kids. And I said, what are you doing? Go get a shower and go get it right now. Sometimes you have to be firm with people. But you got to be firm. I'll never forget something Marty Grisham said one time. He was being attacked somehow, some way. There was a, a demon was attacking his family. And you know it when it happens. Just one thing after another. Miss Patera, she had, she lost three baby goats in a, a terrible the mama, they just died and she was upset and, and, um, her family had a car accident and the garage door quit going up and down, you know, and she just started rebuking. I'm sure she did because that's what she does. 
And if you haven't watched Dutch Sheets this morning, watch him this morning and be sure and watch him tomorrow. Watch him today. Because there's going to be a great way to save money in the next 21 days because he's called for a fast. So go get dressed. Get your shower. Get dressed. Put on some clean drawers. And yeah, I said it. That's where you start. Quit thinking about the whole house and just stand at the front door. And what's the first thing you see? Looking in the house. What's the first thing you see? What's the first thing somebody's going to see? But shine that sink. Get that dishwasher going. If you don't have a dishwasher, start washing some dishes. It only takes a few minutes to wash dishes. I went almost a year without a dishwasher. I, I know. You can wash dishes and get a manicure at the same time. My husband and me and the dog watch our favorite college football when they are playing. We've tried. We're tired of our favorite beanie weenies. Do you have any suggestions for something else for our little football party? Well, bake a brie. That's that's kind of good. Cheese and apples and uh, bake my hardtack baked beans and do some brats. Nothing, there's nothing better than baked beans and brats. Uh, yeah, it's probably the same kind of like your beanie weenies, but my baked beans are wonderful. They are wonderful. So. Put a little bacon in the skillet, a little onion, a little ketchup, a little bit of mustard. <laughs> this guy can't say Worcestershire sauce. He's, a, he, he's branded it. Watch your sister sauce. <laughs> I watch him on videos. He's funny. He's an older fella. And he's a good cook, too. But look at some of those party videos on what people are doing. Make... Robert, Robert makes something called cheese glob. But there are people who make queso all over the place. They put cream cheese and cheddar cheese and, and uh, Monterey Jack cheese and some sausage in a crock pot and heat it up. And some, Robert puts spinach in his. And just have a wonderful queso dip with with sausage in it and it's 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 wonder it's great and another thing i like i like those little cocktail weenies the little tiny ones wrapped i think they call them pigs in a blanket take some uh crescent dough and roll them around it and stick them in the oven and you got pigs in a blanket that's really good Thank you so much, Janet. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all keep me going. It's one of my little podcasters said, you know, this is hard work. This is hard work. I do 10 shows a week and sometimes more than that. And I run the marathon. And... I don't know that I could do another one, but if God told me to, I would. I'm doing what God put me here to do. He put me here to help you. And it's free. You buy my books. You you, you keep sync reflections in royalties. I mean, that's just beautiful. I will forever call it wash your sister sauce. I don't know what it is. I don't even know the name of this guy's little video. But he is cute. He wears his seasonings on his arm. I, I think he must sell some Cajun stuff. But it's it was it's I laugh every time I hear it. I laugh every time I hear it. But y'all, we got stuff to do. We're two weeks out from Thanksgiving. Start your schedule on what you're going to cook today. What cake are you going to... I think I'm going to make an apple cake today. I want an apple cake. Oh, 
<clears throat> anyway, folks, I love you all so much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please keep the evil one away from my fly babies. Help them to rebuke their hopelessness, their sadness, their overwhelmedness. Help them to fight off the evil spirit that makes them feel tired. Help them to do what they need to do, to have the energy to take care of business. Let's get things done because we don't want to wait to the last minute. We know we can, but we don't want to because you have prepared us. You have given us the milk and now we're ready to take on some meat. Thank you, Lord, for giving us strength. Help us to rebuke any evil spirit that comes after us. Protect us from evil. And help us to recognize when we're being attacked. And fight it off because the devil has to flee in the name of, his, of your son, Jesus. He has to flee. So, Lord, thank you for giving us the power and the authority in your son's name. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. I started telling you something and, I, and God put it back in my head. Marty Grisham is having a healing revival in Tulsa this weekend. He is from Tulsa. He's having a healing revival. And it's going to be at Clay Clark's Th Thrive Time um, Church or Thrive Time Center. That's where Clay works. And they had they had turned it into a church when they locked down everything a couple of years ago. And he still kept having church. And Marty is going to be there. But Amanda Grace is going to be there, too. And Chris is going to be there. And they're going to be praying over people. And they're just going to have Friday night and Saturday all day. So if you get a chance, it's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Go see it. But Marty taught me when he was being attacked one time and he recognized it as an attack because when you're doing things for the Lord, the attacks happen. And I rebuke those attacks in the name of Jesus. I rebuke them. For us, it's stopping email. It's, it's stopping sales. It's stopping lots of things. But I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And Marty said he was in the car driving and he was just saying, God, I think he was whining to God and he started repenting and, and God told him, you start rebuking. And Marty started rebuking as if it was a bad dog, a bad dog doing something that they shouldn't do. And he started scolding that demon for attacking him in the name of Jesus. Always use the name of Jesus. So stand strong, rebuke. You got to take care of yourself, Sage. So take a little, little cat nap. In the name of Jesus, rebuke the demons. The demon wants you tired for work, so don't do that. All glory goes to God. Um, we got a great testimony. Well, it wasn't a testimony. It was from my hairdresser this morning. Many years ago, when her son went off to college, I bought a little cross for him to wear. It was a man's cross. It was stainless steel and a chain. And it got, it got broke because it was only eight bucks. And today's his birthday. And... The other day, she asked him what he wanted for his birthday. And he said, Mom, you remember that cross? You, I sent it to Teresa. It, he didn't know it was from me. Uh, you remember that cross that I broke? And he said, I would just like to have that cross. And she's moved since then. So 
she had gotten it fixed and had mailed it back to him, but it got lost in the mail and she hadn't thought about it anymore. Don't you do that sometimes? <clears throat> so she went out to walk Daisy this morning. Now, Daisy's her little boxer. She's had Daisy for a long time. And it's just the cutest dog ever. And not cuter than Tulip, but it's still, you know, it's Tulip and Daisy, flower dogs. And she didn't check the mail yesterday. And she checked the mail, and there was this return to sender packet in there, a little bag. And she opened it up. And it was that cross that got lost that she didn't even know was lost that she'd searched the house over for and hadn't found it. So she sent me that little testimony today. And I said, it's a little things. God likes to, you know, just poke us and say, you know, I got you. I got you. So how, how great is that? God's watching. God's listening. God knows the hairs on our head and how many I lost this morning combing my hair. He knows. He knows these things about all of us. That little old cross didn't, didn't cost a whole lot, but her son wanted it. Anyway, and there it was in her mailbox. And she was so happy. She was so happy. I bought her a few necklaces. When she was helping me get ready for the 2009 videos we were doing, somebody broke in her house and stole her her uh, necklace that was the emblem of, of the flag of South Carolina, where she liked to go to the beach. And so I got her a replacement for that necklace, the palm tree. But folks... It's the little things. We got to be thankful for those little things, for those little bitty things that God does for us every day. And just start praising God. Just start praising Him. I love you all. I'll see you later at three o'clock this afternoon. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself. By thanking God for your blessing, count your blessings, not just on Thanksgiving Day. Count them every day. Anytime you see God do something, you thank God for it. Right there, right there and then. Don't wait. And be appreciative to your husband. I'm always thanking Robert for something. One time he rolled his eyes and he said, you don't mean that. And I said, yeah, I do. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Because he had been conditioned the other way. Somebody was trying to manipulate him. I just wanted it on him to know I'm thankful when he goes and gets our dinner or when he goes to the grocery store for me. Be kind to others by inviting somebody to Thanksgiving dinner or taking your neighbor a plate when you've made too much food because you don't know how to cook for two people. Best way to cook for two people is a baked potato, a salad, and, and a little piece of meat. Yep, that's the best way to cook for two people. If you're going to make casserole, you're going to have you're going to have more than more than more than you can imagine. It's blessings. Be thankful for them. Anyway, let that goodness and sweetness that is inside your heart overflow and show the world who you are. I thought there was a cardinal at my back window. Show the show the world who you are. A child of the only living God in the universe. Those other gods, I mean, you you, you got to read. Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. I'm just thinking about a musical that I have by Mendelssohn. And I can't think of the name of it right now, but I will. I love you all. See you later. Let me. Oh, my. Where'd everything go? There we go.